Hello folks, welcome to Friday, it is the end of the week, congratulations, you've made it. You've gotten to the end, and if you're working this weekend, thank you very, very, very much for keeping the world going round with the rest of us. You are awesome, we love you very much. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below, always helps the channel grow. And if you really like what I do, then the Patreon button is down below, or the link to it anyway, and you can become a member of the channel. Both things help out the, the channel financially to make sure that we can keep the lights on over here at Casa North. And also, if you want to be involved in the prize draw that we do every single month, all you need to do is be a member of the Patreon at any level or a member of the channel. That's all you need to do. Uh, either way, you're, you're financially aiding the channel, so you are entered into the prize draw, whether you like it or not. Um... If you told me you didn't want to be in there, I would obviously, you know, re respect your wishes. But why would you? Because the top prize is £50 worth of free models from Composite Games and a Dark Angels Command box set. With what's going on in the lore at the moment, the Dark Angels are certainly in vogue. So yeah, that is there for you to be won on the 6th Sunday, the 6th of August, will be the next prize draw. So, moving on to Hobby Nightmares. Oh, and if you are getting any sort of models, make sure you give Composite Games some love. They don't half help the channel out. And, uh, yeah, we need to keep them busy, because smaller but smaller businesses in the hobby need to be cherished. Moving on. So, uh, Brimborium says, and he wanted to, me to... Let me just get, get my Discord up here, because his thing is on Discord. Because people like to be awkward. Not his fault. My fault. I like to be awkward, apparently. Right, Brimborium says, Hey North, first off, I really want to thank you and the community for helping me after I submitted the story of my hobby girlfriend passing away last year. Yeah, I, rem I remember that one. You and your community are wonderful. I would like to give you a follow-up as to what's happened since. After my girl passed away, I ended up finding some things about her that really hurt me. Namely, that she was polyamorous and didn't tell me, which is essentially cheating. Uh, what? Dude, you cannot make this shit up. This is how you know. Like, life is weirder than, than fiction. I'm being honest. It is. Her other man, who I will not name, is in a fairly famous metal band and dedicated his most recent album to her. Dude, what the fuck? What in God's name? <laughs> Life is weird, man. Life is weird. I reached out to <clears throat> I reached out to a mutual friend, mutual friend of ours who received most of her belongings. Uh, why he didn't tell me? He said he thought I knew. He and another guy were also involved with her. I'm not going to lie, I was pretty furious. Not at him, but at her. Yeah, man. Yeah. He apologised anyway. He didn't tell me uh, she was gen... Uh, he didn't tell me she genuinely loved me and how she talked about me constantly. Okay, well, that's fine. While a nice comfort, it still hurt. After a while, though, I stopped being upset about it in my heart. I did, I did forgive her in time. There's no sense at being angry at a dead woman. I still mourn her loss because, despite everything, I still have love for her and wish that she was alive. Anyway, months pass and I met another woman in, who was into 40k, but before things got too serious, I also found out she was polyamorous. I'm still single to this day, and happy though. I've been losing weight, casually dating, and working on my World Eaters army. The lesson I learned from, uh, from this is that it may be cool to date someone into the same things you are, but it doesn't always mean that they're right for you. Thanks for reading my story, bro. Dude, what an ending. What a follow-up. My giddy aunt. <laughs> I literally got this at 6 in the morning yesterday. And uh, I, I hadn't read it yet. I recognised the name. And I said, oh, that'd be nice to read out on the channel. I'll read that out, you know. As like a, a follow-up to, to this guy who'd lost his girlfriend, you know. Oh my god. Oh my days. <laughs> I was not expecting that at all. I was expecting like a, a nice start to the hobby nightmares, you know, you, you get some you know, get some happiness in here. No, 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 no. 
Hobby women being hobby women. Sorry, 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 sorry. I know, I know, I know. You're not all like that, I know. Anyway, moving on. Arm Smash says, After a while of listening to your videos, I thought it was about time I sent in a hobby nightmare of my own. Might help keep your mailbag stocked up, eh? You've got to be Canadian saying A at the end of a sentence. Three years ago, I bought an issue of Age of Sigmar Mortal Realms magazine, which, which jump-started this hobby for me. I spent hours building and painting these models. They looked horrible, but I really enjoyed the process, so when the lockdown happened, it was a perfect excuse to start the hobby. I went down to the local Warhammer store and bought an Age of Sigmar starter painting set and got an introduction to painting, and that's when I saw my glorious boys in red. I quickly went onto eBay when I got home and bought 60 Angry, Angry Marines for £25 and started playing them, painting them, sorry, when they arrived. Okay, quick corn red base coats, pretty much dunking the models in, in Reichland flesh shade and a very healthy Evil Sun Scarlet dry brush on my Sons of Baal, but I came to an impasse. When looking at the Blood Angels, I really thought that the head end and the trim on the shoulders did not separate from the red enough, so I, paint, so I painted it black. After my Marines were painted, I booked an introduction game in my local Warhammer store. I went to the store and brought my models in, in my Warhammer foam carry case and set them out on the table. I was facing Death Guard with a squad of pox walkers, and a few turns in became very apparent that nothing I was going to, uh, that uh, nothing I had was going to kill them. But that was fine, as I had a great time until someone came into the store. We'll call him Derek. Let's say Derek was not your average wargamer, but a true champion of Nurgle's rot. He quickly came to the table and started making comments about my marines. Why are you playing those, mate? Don't you know they're massively out of date? Why have you painted them that way? This really started to annoy me, so I packed up my models and bought a few pots of paint for the manager's time. As I was getting ready to leave, to leave, Derek says, Don't call them blood angels if you can't paint them. But at this point, Derek was almost in full-blown uh, laughter, so I, I left the store some, somewhat angrily. I have very rarely gone to play 40k games since, but I did do one positive as I it really pushed me to paint better just to say fuck you to that Derek. I wish I could just batch paint my marines now, but I'm easily spending 24 hours per assault intercessor, which is in some ways an issue, as now my pile of shame is getting rather daunting, and I have been rather reluctant to go and find a game as half of my army is unpainted, and I don't feel comfortable playing without, without un, with, un, with, sorry, with unpainted miniatures. Should I be as bothered about this as I am? Thank you for reading my rambles. I attached some photos below. Yeah, dude, you, you, they don't look too bad at all. I'm not going to put them on here because I, I just don't have the time right now. Um, I was supposed to be doing like a, a big, massive story today. That's going to be three hours long, but I just don't have the time. I just do not have the time. It's all there. The, the script is there. It's written. It's done. I just need to, to, to record it. I might record it tomorrow for Monday. I don't know. Uh, it depends when I get time to do it. Finding a three-hour chunk of time when I'm doing nothing at the moment is 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 difficult, and I'm not recording, uh, you know, when I'm spending time with my family and my friends. Like that, that's not that's unhealthy. I'm not doing that. So, you know, trying to find time is trying at the moment, but I will do. I will do. Um, listen, what you came across there is not normal in the hobby. It's not. It, it is not a normal thing to happen in the hobby. You will get people in the hobby who want to come over and give you their, their piece about your models. But as long as you... A lot of these stories I get, there is no, there's no reaction to it. You simply get angry, get your knickers in a twist and walk away. Now, that can just be one of those things, I suppose. But what you need to do is challenge that behavior. What you need to do is say, listen, mate, I don't think that's very appropriate. I'm very new. You know, I've just started the hobby. I'm here to have some fun. Why can't you keep your comments to yourself? If you haven't got anything nice to say, don't say anything. And you, you are you are literally not giving this hobby a very good name by the way you're speaking to me right now. You're making me not even want to bother being here, to be honest with you. As soon as you say that to somebody, it shuts down every counter-argument they're ever going to have. Every, every, every counter-argument that they bring to what you've just said there makes them sound like a dickhead, because they are. And people around them would be like, wow, what a douche. Right? That's all you've got to say. Just be honest. Say, hey man, I don't really appreciate the way you're talking to me right now. I'm a beginner. I've just started. What do you want me to do? Be like Duncan Road straight away. 
Have you seen Duncan Rhodes' first model? It was abysmal. You know, you're probably a lot, lot further ahead than he was. To be honest. You know? So, like, don't... Don't get dissuaded by it. And next time it happens, if it ever, ever does happen again, I'm telling you now, it won't. You've come across a very special person there. And I use the word special in inverted commas, right? You've come across a very special person there. And, yeah, that is not normal. But if, if it ever does happen again, say, look, man, I'm a beginner. Get off your high horse. Stop being a prick. You know, I'm a beginner. What dropped me to be? An expert painter when I've just started. I'm learning. And you're giving the hobby a bad name with how you're speaking to me right now. It's ridiculous. You're the reason why no more people don't get into this hobby. As soon as you say that, anything they say in retort to what you've just said makes them sound like a dickhead. They won't know what to say. They'll be very, very, very quiet. Just be honest. Be honest about where you are in your hobby. That's it. All good. Moving on. The Great Desmundo says, Hey North, call me Des. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you did, because your name's literally the great fucking Desmondo. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Call you Kevin. Um, <clears throat> so. So, it's been quite interesting going over the arguments back and forth this week. I've been a long lurker on the channel, but thought it was about time I wrote something in. Which is kind of why I love the channel, as it focuses not just on the normal rules, tournaments, law, and things, but the people talking about the law and that stuff. You look behind the scenes. Yeah. Basically, yeah, that, that, I've, I've said this before in, in, a, in a video that this is literally what I do. I, I, I look behind the curtain and I try and make sure I can, I'm can. i having a little laugh at other things. I guess this week was a very people-heavy week. You mentioned the other day guys going their own way and walking away from women and relationships entirely. I just wanted to put something forward on that. I moved from St. Louis, Missouri to Chicago, Illinois because of a woman this year. Much like another story this week, if you read this in the same week, I guess, I met a woman through the hobby at a local gaming convention. Not strictly 40k, but still tabletop. Things went well. We had a kid, years later. She cheated on me, okay. She, she got the house and got the kid before kicking me out of my own house that I still have to pay mortgage on for this other guy to move in. Yeah, this is why dudes are going their own way, much like me. Dude. Well, I'm glad you didn't go too far into the story. I, that, I, I imagine that's a story that could have been hours long. My God. That sucks. That sucks. <clears throat> Before we go anywhere else, I was always a provider. I was always a good, a good father, and I was always a good guy to her. We got along like a house on fire, and when, when the revelations came out about her infidelity, it really floored me. My God. I am making... But, I am making more money now than I ever was when I was with her. Thankfully, the universe smiled on me and one of my serials was picked up for TV and Amazon Prime. I've been writing for the past two years for Amazon Prime shows. I'm not saying which. And one for Netflix. Sandman, if you want to know. I don't mind saying that as it's mostly Neil Gaiman's work. Okay, cool. So safe to say, I'm earning a very decent wage doing what I love for a living. That's awesome, dude. Fuck. You're killing it. Yeah, you got life by the balls. You're doing well. She sees almost none of this money as I am ch as I am challenging my alimony payments until I get a DNA test on the child and, if the child is mine, access to see said child, which I am so far being denied. I have been threatened by the local government, lawyers, and even my own lawyers have told me to pay a certain sum to the woman in the form of mortgage payments to keep them off my back. This is how toxic it can get. That's terrible, man. That's terrible. That's one thing I did notice about the US, is if you're a dude over there, you're screwed, man. If, if you're, your, your woman can cheat on you, get you out of the house, and take your kids away from you, you have no recourse. You have no recourse. And this is why men's rights stuff exists. You have no recourse whatsoever. It's pathetic. Thankfully, since I made the vast, the vast bulk of my money after we split, she is apparently not entitled to a dime of it, but only what I had when we were together, which amounts to about 10 grand. <laughs> which she is very, very, very bitter about. This whole process has almost ruined but definitely poisoned 
the most successful time of my life. The part where all of that hard work finally paid off. All because of a woman and her near inability to keep her legs closed. Sorry if that was harsh, but I'm kind of done with women in general. Since I've walked away, I've enjoyed my hobby, bought a brand new Black Templars Force that now has pride of place on a massive cabinet in my front room. I have found friends in the Chicago area and I play 40k almost every weekend and we head for drinks afterwards. It's my dream to work on a 40k project writing one day and I've kept my ears to the ground at Amazon for the Cavill show that, that I will definitely be applying to write for. Anyway, things are looking up so I just wanted to say that sometimes going your own way can end in good things. Although I am lonely at times and jerking off certainly gets old. You get used to it. For all the negative things going on, uh, going up on my own way brings, most of it is made up for by just having fun on my own terms where and when I want to. Anyway, thanks for listening, and no, Des is not my real name. It was the name of the first character of mine to make it onto TV. Keep on keeping on, Des. Cheers, man. Jesus Christ. I hope that works out for you. I hope that all works out. Uh, I'm going to have to take a sip of tea before I get into this. Oh, dear. All right, so, man, you are you are one lucky mother Hubbard. Uh, for things to fall into place like they did, that is that is prime luck right there. You are very lucky, not because you're not very good at what you do. You obviously are. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you're very lucky because things could have easily have gone the other way. I'm sure you know this. You could have been stuck in your same dead end job and paying alimony payments, and you don't have the money to buy legal teams to to fight your case for you. For all of the guys that this ends up well for in the States, there are there are plenty more where this ends badly. And they've got nothing to their name and this woman's ruined their life. Listen, I said yesterday that going your own way very rarely ends in happiness. And what we have to remember is, uh, Dez is not typical. Dez has, Dez has made a lot of money. He's doing very well for himself. A lot of us out there, you can fill, it, you can fill a lot of holes with money and success, right? Most of us only have moderate money and success, though. It just is it's, it's a fact of life. So you can't really fill the holes that are left behind by women and kids with those things. Like Des can. And eventually, I'm telling you now, Des, you will end up having kids, mate. You will end up with another woman having kids. But because you're very successful and you're you're now a a high quality, high value man, you'll be able to choose the one you want, have exactly what you want when you want it, and you'll have a really nice life. Right? Because you made it. You're in the upper you're in the upper bracket now. You're you're a guy that women want. This is this is the successful guy that women want. So, um, I, I just do you say in your preamble because there's a preamble that you said I didn't need to read. Let's have a look. All right, so you're 29, and you would look at yourself as a seven out of ten. Okay, so anytime a guy says he's a seven out of ten in terms of looks, he's probably been told by a lot of women he's very good looking and he's trying to be modest. So. Dude, yeah, you're 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 killing it, right? You 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 will end up with somebody, but you will end up with somebody because you will going on your own way only works for a certain amount of time. It is a very good thing to do for a year or two after a bad breakup, maybe even three three to five years after a really bad breakup where you've been really hurt. Go your own way, work on yourself. I agree with that completely. Go your own way, sack women off. Don't think about them. Don't look at them. Just do what you want to do with your life. Put your life on an even keel. And when you're ready, that's when you step back into not chasing women, but interviewing them. You'll know you're doing well with yourself, right? When you're not, you're not chasing this anymore, you're interviewing people. You're going, hey, um, yeah, I don't think you're for me. Bye. Right? I don't think you're for me either. Bye. Okay, uh, what about you? No, no, I don't think you're for me either, right? When you're doing that, when you're actually going on dates and you're going, nah, you know what? It's not worth me bringing you into my life because you'll just add more stress to it. So, and I love my life as it is, so you can go away. Thank you. You know, that's when you know you're making it. So if you have a bad breakup, yeah, go your own way for a few years, right? But going your own way isn't an end goal. This is what I was saying yesterday. Going your own way is not an end state, it's an end state that ends in, and then he turned the gun on himself. That's where that ends. We're human beings, man. We're not sociopaths. You're not all these cool sociopath loner types. You're not. 
I'm sorry, you're not. You're normal dudes, and you've been hurt. And it's it's normal to react in a very angry way. It's very normal to say, I'm never getting with a woman again. I'm going my own way. I did that. I went my own way for a few years. And I built this channel. I went to the gym and I built this channel. That's what I did with my downtime. Uh, on, on my on my going my own way excursion. I still got laid every now and again, but I was mainly on my own, right? And I had next to no... No... E until very recently, I've had next to no real... I'm going to be honest with you, there'll be one or two people watching this who could be like, What? Uh, <laughs> you know who you are. But I've had next to no impetus to actually be in a relationship. I've just been with people that I think are cool that I would like to have sex with, right? Literally. That's literally how I've been the past couple of years. It's only very recently where I've come out of that and gone, do you know what? I actually would like to find somebody. I actually would like to settle down and have someone who's cool in my life, right? I just want someone who's cool. I don't even want hot. This is when you know you've kind of made it on the other side. I don't even necessarily want hot, a hot woman. I want a cool woman. I want a woman who I can go out with my friends without her. I can do my own hobbies. I can have my own time. I can do my own thing. And she's cool with it. That's what I want. Okay? Not even necessarily uber hot. I'll, I'd, I'd go for an average woman if, if, if you give me no stress. If you don't bring stress and negativity to my life, you you know, you've got a decent chance. And that's when you know you've made it, dude. When, when you stop looking at tits and ass. And you're looking at, hmm, my life's going pretty well. And I don't want it to be ruined by some fucking woman. So, uh, that's what I'm interviewing for, right? And that's where you will come to, Des. You will literally come to that. You'll come to the point where you go, yeah, do you know what? I actually would like a woman around here, just so it's companionship. And, you know, uh, it, it's, it's like a best friend who I can have around me all the time, who gets me. And, you know, get my dick sucked as well. And, and all, all the other things, you know, all the other things that come with it. So, like... It will happen. You will eventually, if you're a well-adjusted person who isn't angry and bitter, you will eventually not go on your own. You will eventually say, I've been on my own, quite naturally, after a few years, I've been on my own, now I'm ready for someone else. That's what will happen. That's the healthy way of doing it. That's what I did. Right? Didn't even realise I was doing it. I went on my own. I refused contact with, with, with most, not contact, but I, re I refused to get with, with most women I was with. I was dating. I would date people for a few weeks. Wouldn't get bored, but, but they would start getting attached and I'd back away. Or I would act in a way that forced them to leave me. You know, I'd be like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to meet up this weekend. Nah, I'm good. Like, I, I don't really like, you know, I, your situation as it is. I'm, I'm not really for me. You know, I'll be friends with you, but like, you know. And that's what I did for like a couple of years. I went on my own. I was fine. And I was fine. All good. And now I'm much better person for it like i'm back and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go i'm fine you know and i'm having a good time so that's the thing to do but going your own way is not an end state in itself that's my point there's nothing wrong with going your own way for a while getting your life on track going to the gym getting yourself sorted out enjoying life the way you want to enjoy it for a while at the behest of nobody else that's completely healthy completely healthy okay but it's not an end state. It, it, it is empty. If, if you let it go on too long, it becomes empty. You don't value the things that, that, you're, that you're supposed to value to be a healthy person. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Nurgling Stomper says... Nurgling Stomper? Hello, North. You can call me Nurgling Stomper. Well, thank you. Uh, your name is Nurgling Stomper, so... Please excuse my English. It is not my native tongue, and I sometimes let a foreign guy error slip through. I've been playing 40k since 2nd edition, starting when I was just 10 in the mid to late 90s. Some background first. I'm autistic, with Asperger diagnosis, though I have what's called high-functioning Asperger's. Anytime somebody says Asperger's, I think of the South Park thing, when they say Asperger's. I don't know why, <laughs> just makes me giggle. And through therapy... And with the help of psychiatrists, I have managed to live a somewhat normal life. And, though my circle of friends is not very big, I tend to always keep a few friends very close. Dude, your writing's really good. For somebody who's got Asperger's and, and is also, you know, and is also uh, foreign, you're doing very well. As many others in the hobby, 
being active in the hobby comes in periods. Though I always stay up late to, to uh, stay up to date with the lore. I'm a big fan of lore and painting the models. Winning games is not really a priority for me. I'd rather have a great time with an awesome narrative. I've played many different armies over the years, but since, but ever since I saw the Sisters of Battle on the cover of White Dwarf back in the day, Sisters have always been my main army. I still have my old Metal Sisters. The story I'm about to tell you starts somewhere around the 8th edition, I think. I'd been out of the hobby for about 5 years at this time. Having moved around a bit during the years, I decided it was time to settle down somewhere, and I ended up in a biggish town in my home country. Rumours were going around that the Sisters of Battle were about to get a plastic release. I knew I had to get back into 40k again, so I got me some Ultra Smurfs just to get back into the painting side of it, I'd have, side of it sorry, and getting some basic knowledge of the rules. I started hanging out in the local hobby store, playing the odd game, and but mostly for some social life in my otherwise mundane existence. It was some really awesome times. Good, good, good. The big day arrives and the sisters in plastic are released. I had been saving up some cash for this moment and spent £1,200 in one go, buying up every kit and box I could get my hands on. Oh my god. I was ecstatic and spent every single moment of my free time building and painting sisters, either at home or at the hobby store. I have always been told my painting is really great and that I should consider doing commissions and that is absolutely not something I want to do. My painting is even good enough that it has been featured multiple times by official Games Workshop outlets, such as their Twitch channel and the like. Let's just say, I'm proud of my painting skills, but I don't really want to monetize them. It took me about six months to finish enough sisters to field an army that I could be proud of. My first games with them were awesome, and I didn't care about winning or losing, just having a good time and learning the rules. Fast forward a few months, and this is where things start to go a little bit downhill. Let's start with this. The 40k in my hometown was about 60% male and 40% female. A great mix and everybody always had an amazing time. And there was never any sort of troubles that you might assume would arise from this kind of thing. 40%'s huge. That's massive. <clears throat> I was playing a game with a friend over at the hobby store one evening during a hobby night. There were about 50 people present and everybody was having a good time. I do as I always do, came up with narratives for the game as we go along, something I've been told people really enjoy and where a lot of people really want to play against me. I was once told by someone they learned so much lore about 40k just from playing against me in certain games. Moving on, after the game one of the girls comes over to me and says, hey, so me and the other girls have been talking, we would like you to stop playing sisters. It's the only army we girls can call our own and you are stealing that away from us. <laughs> oh my god. I just want to see the look of utter shock on, <laughs> on your face. Oh. You just. It must be so hard for you to not go, oh, taking it away from you, am I? <laughs> just. Look how well painted my sisters are. Oh, baby gonna cry. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That's so funny. That... <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Then they're not, they're not allowed to play Space Marines then. Just tell them that. Tell them, what army do you play? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're not allowed to play Necrons, they're mostly male. You're not allowed to play Tyranids. They, 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 they don't have sex. They don't have a sex. You're not allowed to play them. It's the only ones that... The Tyranids are the only army that asexuals are allowed to play. You're not allowed to play as them. Retarded logic for retarded people. I was in a bit of shock. I didn't really... Yeah, no shit. I didn't really know what to say. I just packed up my things and left the store. A few days later, I texted one of the girls who had become a great friend of mine and asked her what the hell was up. She said that this had happened... And she, and she being awesome, she, she said that this had happened and she being awesome had told them to get a life and left their table. This had been confirmed by other sources and not just something she said because I asked her. Well, good. Good, dude. Just go in there. Go in there and play sisters and play them really well. And you know what? 
put on, put, get, walk in and really, you know, really nail down that you're playing sisters and you love playing sisters. I love playing sisters of battle. I love how shapely the forms are. Be really creepy about it, right? Just to annoy them. Just to really get on on their tits. Just say, yeah, I, I love the skirts. Brilliant. You know, and, and do shit like that. Oh, man, it'd be so funny. Again, don't do that. That's just me being facetious. But um, you should really go in and enjoy playing your sisters, man. That is the best comeback you can do here. Just go in, play your army, enjoy playing it. And don't listen to them. That's the best That's the best thing you can get. And if anyone asks, or if anyone says, Hey, you play sisters? And he goes, yeah, some people don't like you playing sisters, but they can go suck a dick. All right? And just do little, little things like that. Until they leave. This put me off from playing anymore. And I put away my army in a closet and sold off my pile of shame. Dude, why? Come on, dude. I was out for about a year until a friend said there, were, there was going to be a big tournament in town and that I should enter. Just to get me back into the game. I agreed to do so and entered the tournament. I was never out to win. I just wanted to have a good time and play some more games. When I got to the tournament, about 60 players were attending. I had some good games and ended up somewhere in the middle of the leaderboard. And I didn't care that much. What I did care about was the top three best painted army competition. About 80% of the attendees did not care about painting. The organisers had put a rule in play that stated, All armies must have painted bases and there must be at least three colours on each miniature. The result was that almost all players had un had un unpainted miniatures with three different coloured spots on the bases. Yeah, of course. How could this become a nightmare? Well, this is how. The tournament was by power players for power players. This was not clear to me until I had my first game, and the others who were like me and that were not power players were caught off guard. But I figured I'd at least have a shot at the painting competition. Boy, was I wrong. The winners, when announced, were all power players with grey models. They were all laughing and joking around about it. I caught one of the judges, quote-unquote, who I sort of knew from back in the hobby store. I asked him what the hell gives. This can't possibly be right. Turns out, the power players and the judges are all from the same community, and I'd been having out a few beers the, the other night. The ones who had ordered the most rounds for the table on the night would be winning, would be winning the painting competition, and that was that. I was gutted. Home I went and put my army back in the closet. Yeah, that's the one where I don't blame you for putting your army back in the closet. That's the one, right? This was about five years ago. I never wanted to get back into the hobby again. Don't blame you. But, dear North, this changed. I have since moved to the UK, not too far from Warhammer World. I also have friends of, uh, of old in this area who play 40k. They have managed. That they have brought me back in, and now I am working on a second army and enjoying it all again. No tournaments, no bullshit, no power players, just friends enjoying the lore and narrative more than winning games and competition. I will never enter a competition again, and will just enjoy the hobby my way from now on. Don't know if you'll read this, but thank you either way, Nurgling Stomper. So, um, dude, yeah, I mean, not not all. Again, let's not tar all tournaments with the same brush. Let's not do that. Because that, that's not right. Some tournaments are fantastic and really, really fun to be at. Not all of them, but most of them, right? You will always get people who act this way, uh, though, especially in unsanctioned tournaments. Tournaments that are just done off the cuff, right? By friends. You're always going to get bullshit like this. The one that I want to get on onto is the... That will always be a part of the thing. The one I will always get onto is that sister's comment. Dude, do not ever... Let someone tell you you're being offensive when you know you're not. You know you're not. You know as a man, you playing an army of women is not offensive in any way. You should have told them to fuck off and play your army and your narrative the way you want to do it. That's what you should have done. You should have carried on playing your games. Get your revenge that way. Get your revenge with sheer indifference. I nothing you. I don't hate you. I nothing you. You are nothing to me. You get no reaction from me. All you are is a grey person shouting retarded grey noise at me. You are nothing. You are irrelevant. Go away. That's what you do. You play your army and you ignore them. In fact, you play your army well. 
You say, I'm not even here to win. I just love space nuns. And say it with relish. I just love space nuns. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's creepy, but you're doing it for the audience. You're doing it for those people to annoy them. That's the one time I'll say, dude, be, be as creepy as you want. Be as creepy as you want. Annoy them. No, even if you even if you don't do it for the gratification of the female body and shit like that, say you do. Just say shit like that, just wind them up. Again, th th this is a, a comedian's... I'm friends with one or two comedians, and this is what they would do, right? This is exactly what they would do. They would just go in there and be like, I love the skirts, I love the I love the tassels on the on the chests. And like that. They would just really creep people out. So like, yeah, you, if you, you think I'm being offensive before, oh, you've got no... You don't know who you're dealing with, right? And if you can't do that, just play your army and ignore them, dude. Ignore them. Stop being so sensitive. Ignore them. Move on. Just go, nah, 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 nah. That's bullshit. I don't give a shit what you say. My army's great. I'm great. My painting's great. You're a little bitch. Go away. Goodbye. Thank you. Right, and just play your army. And just go, I love playing sisters. Especially when other people don't like me playing them. It's brilliant. Love it. Oh, by the way, that girl's not allowed to play salamanders. Salamanders are black. You're not allowed to play salamanders. Nope. She's not allowed to play Eldar. She's not an elf. She's not an elf. You're not allowed to play Eldar. She's not a little person. She's not a little person. She's not allowed to play Leagues of Vatan. Get out of here with that shit. Right. Play your army the way you want to play them, dude. And sack the rest of them off. Love you a long time. I will speak to you on Monday with some more Hobby Nightmares. I may be back over the weekend to do a, a stream or two. We will see. But I love you all. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And have a really good one. See you later now. Bye.